I attend a visitation Wednesday here. I left early and uh, went to see Colby. Like I said, I went to visit in UMS about a year ago. He was skinny, skinny long that time, a year ago. And uh, yeah, he was a casket. It just, it's heartbreaking. Suffered disease down to the body. He was 24. And the thing, this song about people singing this song, life is like a mountain railway. There's always a rail in front of you. Exactly the best of the best, isn't it? Even though your life is set up in a short time, but still the God is there. I need your prayer for the Melissa, his wife. All that. Life is not easy, but life is with God. Last night. Dear Lord, we come to you. Our hands and open our eyes. Open our heart. Open our ears. Give us a message we need to hear. Touch our heart. assurance that you gave to Mary. You are with us. Whatever going through this side of eternity. Oh, thank you we have this opportunity to worship you. The next few moments Lay aside all the burdens and let us hear you. Be with you. Things we need to hear more than one more. Make me a mouthpiece of your people. In Jesus' name we pray. So, John chapter 20, verse 1 through 18. This lesson says, that's the whole book of John. <laughs> it's a long time. Uh, verse 1 through 9, that is, you know, Mary Magdalene, find out the tomb is empty. So, call John and the Peter. And the John and Peter came to look into that empty tomb. He said, oh my goodness, what's going on? Right? But the point is, verse 9, the four words, yet they knew not the scripture that he must raise again, rise again from the dead. They have no idea rise again from the dead. Everybody thought somebody stole the dead part. So, I'm skipping through the verse 10. John, chapter 20, verse 10. Then the disciple went away again into the own pool. But Mary stood outside the sepulchre weeping. As she wept, she stood down and looked into the sepulchre. And saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head, the other at the feet, where the body of the Jesus had 
And they said unto her, Woman, why weep? She said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord. I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus spoke, she turned back and saw Jesus standing and knew not it was Jesus. Remember this was early, early morning. It is daybreak. Before the daybreak, they tried to get in and it was dark. But they didn't notice because she was crying. She didn't notice because she was not expecting. Whatever the reason is, she didn't know this was Jesus. Verse 15 says, Jesus said unto her, Woman, why do you weep? Whom do you seek? She supposing him to be a gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have borne him away, tell me where you have laid him. I will take Jesus said unto her, Mary. She turned and said to him, Rabbi, Ramon, Rabbi. But Jesus said, Teach. Verse 17 starts says, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brother. Say unto them, I ascended unto my father, and your father, and to my God, and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord, that he had spoken these things unto her. Why Jesus appeared? This is a book from the Life of Carl about undeniable hope and talking about why Jesus appeared to before, well, you know, 50 different cases or whatever appeared in many places. Amos, disciple. John, Thomas wasn't there, but came back and see Thomas. Okay, several things, right? And this is the first place, though. But the first place, she appeared to who? Is it Peter? It need to be John? It need to be 12 apostles, or 11 of them. Main character of the Bible, don't you think that she need to be? Jesus appeared to Mary. The lady character is not much. Oh my goodness, Mary has a name. All of them is, you know. Think about it, all the Bible said brother, right? So I'm going to start picking up the translation of that new part. I'm going to start reading the New Life translation, which is, says, brother and sister. Jesus appeared to Mary the We don't know what her history is, but she is kind of cast away, kind behind. Kind of past is not that problem. But she began to follow Jesus. What Mary called Jesus, my mom, master, teacher. She needed Jesus more than anybody. That's why even Jesus came to her. I'm going to go back to the John 20, verse 11, again. 
This is the New Life Translation. Kind of. The words like uh, that come from the days of our lives. You know, those. <laughs> I don't know. That's not good. No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Go away. Updated translation, it says, verse 11, Mary had standing outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she stood and looked in. She saw two white robed angels, one sitting at the head and the other at the foot of the place where the body of Jesus had been lying. Dear woman, why are you crying? The angel asked her. Now, at this point, remember, it was dark. You don't have those LED headlights. Look through the clear picture. It was a little candle and everything. You just it's so hard to look through. Remember we have an Easter service on the outside and break of the dawn, but the, barely we can see the songbook and everything. It's cold and everything, right? So she didn't know this is an angel or whatever. But the two men sit there and start talking. Desperate Mary stayed with empty tomb. And the angel comfort. I don't know comfort or that the word, but uh, she stopped talking to angel, the stranger. The word of Mary said, because they have taken away my Lord, she replied. I don't know where they have put him. Let me say the word one more time. The Mary said, I don't know where they have put him. I don't know where my Jesus is. That's what Mary is saying. Isn't it dead body? We live in creature. Our flesh will die. Death will never be. Just like Cody laying in the casket. We will face the death. We will lay like a near light. And this way here, we have a service that we pay the last respect to that person. So the Mary the Magdalene tried to do the same thing, put the last respect to Jesus, the teacher, and all of a sudden the tomb is empty. The body is moved away. If you know you put Jesus, let me know I'm going to take him back. I need to know where Jesus is. Verse 14, but she turned to leave the soul. Someone standing there. Now, conversation was in the tomb, and Mary was so sad and turned out to outside. I don't know if she's going back to Peter and John's place, or you just look around outside. And she saw someone standing there in the dusk of very seeing people standing. It was Jesus, but she didn't recognize him. And this translation starts like this, verse 15. Dear woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her. Who are you looking for? That's a two question mark. Who are you? Yeah, no. Why are you crying? 
Who are you looking for? Remember all knowing God asking you a question? It's always a trick question, isn't it? Trick question or affirming? The answer is always there. On this case, Jesus saying, Why are you crying? Why? I love the word of that. Dear woman. Dear woman. What? That's what Jesus said to Mary, right? So Mary thought he was a gardener. So she said, answer this way. Sir, if you haven't taken him away, tell me where you have put him. I will go and get him back. Sir, I don't know who you are, but if you know this body you took and said somewhere, let me know because I need him. I need to get him back and in my life. Verse 16, finally Jesus and Mary, Jesus. This Bible is so good. It said Mary and exclamation mark. <laughs> Mary. Mary, think about it. Mary. But it says she turned to him and cried out. Rabboni, teacher, master. Oh, Jesus, you are alive. Verse 17, don't cling to me, Jesus says in this part. King James Bryan said, Touch me not. For I am not yet ascending to my Father. And a long, long time, I thought Mary was standing and uh, said, Don't you ever touch me. You know, that kind of stuff. But here, this translation, Verse 17, don't cling to me, Jesus said. Remember that Thomas was not there when the apostle was meeting. And Thomas said, Oh, I cannot believe it. But I don't want to see. And touch the hand and touch the side. So the next time Jesus appeared, appeared, but before I touched him, it was certain. And Thomas no, my Lord. And worship him. So touching was not involved. I think that is true. But this case right here. That's what Brother Max Lucado was saying also. He said, don't clean me. Which means, Mary the Magdalene, when Jesus called Mary, and then she just ran to him and, oh, you are alive. Hugged him or whatever, fell down to the feet, whatever. And Jesus said, don't touch me. Let me go. That's what this translation says. Don't cling to me. Because after the death, buried, and the resurrection, there is a basically change. The whole thing. The ministry of Jesus Christ. Remember that he fed 5,000, he fed 4,000. Is that the whole operation of Jerusalem? 
No, he was limited because of fresh regard. So had to be changed the whole ministry work. That reason, oh Mary, you cannot cling to me. My ministry will change the whole, whole world. I'm going to the everyone because God sent His Son to everyone. Because God loved everyone. It's not 5,000. It's not Jesus ministry. Oh, I haven't sent to the Father. But you need to do this. Go find my brother and tell him. I like this translation. Go find my brothers and tell them. Yeah, King James is saying the same thing. Go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto the Father, and your Father. What? My Father is your Father. My God is your God. Do you know that? We need to say that. Jesus is my brother. Is it? Mary the Magdalene came and told this up. She had seen the Lord. And the Lord spoke and did things unto Mary. You love translation. It's drastic. Mary the Magdalene found the disciple and told them. In the conversation, I have seen the Lord! Exclamation mark. <laughs> I love this. I have seen the Lord. Then she gave them his message. His message was, I am ascending to my Father, your Father, to my God and your So, let's go to the Hebrew chapter 2, verse 11. Paul, a few years later, this happened. So Paul said this way. So now Jesus said, once he makes holy, have the same father, same father, his father, my father, your father, it's one God in unity. That is why Jesus is not ashamed to call them his brothers and sisters. Brother and sister in Christ, we say time and time, but we are, if we are the brother and sister in Christ, we need to act like the brother and sister in Christ. We need to know what the Christ Jesus is, but also the Father in heaven. He is my father, your father, Jesus' father. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 12. For he said to God, I will proclaim your name to my brother and my sister. I will praise you among your assembled people. He also said, I will put my trust in him, that is, I and the children of God has given me because God's children human being. Now listen, God's children, us, right? And we are human beings, right? Made of flesh and blood. And the Jesus came. 
The sun also became flesh and blood. Yes, he went through the same way. I am right now, you are right now, Mary the Magdalene right now, right now, a long time ago. But the human body, high blood pressure and high cholesterol, whatever I'm getting is dragging those problems. Diabetic, cystic fibrosis, whatever the body is suffering, because it's a flesh, because you are carrying the fleshy body that will decay, it binded, it's limited. But Jesus overcame that. Verse 14 again, because God children, the human being, made of flesh and blood. Son also became flesh and blood. For only as human being could he die. And only by dying could he break the power of the dead, or power of death, who had power of death. So the power of death. When Jesus came down from the cross, they put in the sepulchre, they put in the grave, put the tombstone, sealed up, then everything. But the death was not the final point. Jesus still lives. Jesus is alive. Now, when Jesus is alive, can we say, alive in my life? Can he is alive to your life? Remember what the Mary the Magdalene said, I need to know where Jesus is. Can you tell where your Jesus is? Life is like a mountain railway. It's just going which way or whatever. You have to watch the curve. The tunnel is coming. But you need to know where Jesus is because Jesus will carry you all over the place. And that's the reason Jesus appeared to Mary. We are limited. We are not perfect, but the perfect one is carrying us to all the way to heaven. Jesus will guide us all the way to heaven because he knows the rainbow. He knows the presence of God. So tell me, you've seen Jesus. Tell me that Jesus changed my life. Tell me you are going to heaven. It's all stand. As we sing this song. Invite you to come to the throne of God. Come to join the family as a brother and sister in Christ. And if you need the fact, if you need the word to your heart, it is time that you see.